Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, <clears throat> thank you for hosting this hearing. Uh, clearly important topics around content moderation. I'm uh, a skeptic uh, of the content moderation policies that exist, both because I don't think the standards are very transparent and I don't think the execution is very consistent. Um, that said, I'm more skeptical than a lot of my colleagues, I think on both sides of the aisle, about whether or not there's a regulatory fix that will make it better instead of worse. Um, I especially think it's odd uh, that so many on, in my party are zealous to do this right now when you would have uh, an incoming administration of the other party that would be writing the rules and regulations about it. Um, and I think it's telling that a number of folks on the other side of the dais I think of Senator Blumenthal, uh, a guy I like, but who seemed to almost be giddy about the prospect of a new government regulatory agency to police uh, online speech. Uh, and I think a lot of people on my side should take pause at the idea that so many on the other side of the aisle are excited about having the next administration get to write these rules and regulations. But um, to, the, to the broader question, first just to get to kind of a level set, and I want to thank both the witnesses for being here today. But when Senator Lee lays out some of the issues he did about, um, you know, just the every human community is going to be situated in a different place about policy uh, commitments and, and priorities and beliefs. But when uh, Senator Lee said that 93% of Facebook employees who contribute to politics uh, do so on the left and 99%, uh, I think it was, of Twitter employees contribute on the left. I, I would just be interested to see if either of the two of you think that has implications in the shepherding of your organizations. Again, I recognize fully um, that you're private organizations, and so again, I'm more skeptical of a governmental fix for a lot of the problems we're talking about here today. But I just, I'm curious as to whether or not Mr. Zuckerberg and Mr. Dorsey, and I guess we'll start with Facebook, I'm curious as to whether or not you think it's likely uh, that there is systemic bias inside your organization uh, in the execution of content moderation policies, given that your employee base is so unrepresentative of America in general. Senator, I, I think it's a good question. And certainly, uh, I think it means that we have to be more intentional about what we do and, and thoughtful. Um, our principal and, and goal is to give everyone a voice and to be a platform for all ideas. Um, as you mentioned, I do think it's undisputed that um, our employee base, at least the, the full time folks, um, uh, politically would be um, somewhat or, or maybe more than just a little somewhat um, to the left of where our overall community is, where, where the community um, basically spans uh, almost a wide varieties of people across society. So I do think that that means that we need to be um, careful and intentional internally to make sure that bias uh, doesn't seep into decisions that we make. Um, although I'd, I'd point out a couple of things. One is that, um, you know, people have a lot of different views outside of work and we, we expect and, and, and I think generally see that people conduct themselves professionally. Um, and second, the folks who are doing the content review work, we have about 35,000 people doing content review, are typically not based in, in Silicon Valley. Um, they're based in places all over the country and um, all over the world because we, we serve uh, people in, in countries all over the world. So I think that the geographic diversity of that um, is, is more representative of the community that we serve uh, than, than just the full-time employee base in our headquarters in the Bay Area. Thanks, Mr. Zuckerberg. Mr. Dorsey. Yeah, I, I um, you know, this is obviously not something we we interview for, um, and uh, even have you know an understanding of when when people are in the company, um, and with that understanding, we intend to make sure that our, both our policy um, and our enforcement uh, is objective, and um, I realize that uh, it looks rather opaque, and uh, certainly the outcomes might not always match up with that intention, with our intention, um, and the perception of those outcomes will, may not match up. But that's why I think it's so important that we're not just transparent around our policies, but the actual operations of our content moderation. If people don't trust our intent, if people are questioning that, that's a failure. And that is something that we need to fix and intend to fix. And I think it would benefit the industry as well. But I do, again, point back to um, something I said earlier on the testimony, which is 
a lot of these decisions are not being made by humans anymore. They're being made by algorithms. And that's certainly enforcement decisions, but also decisions around what you see or what you don't see. And to me, that is the body of work. That is the conversation that we should be focused on because that is the enduring uh, use case for everyone who interacts with these services. Thank you. And I, I, I wish it were true um, that this would all, that these were all easy, you know, objective questions that, that the questions were, if somebody says, is the sky green? Um, that's an objective question that the sky is blue and white, not green. Um, but most of the things we're talking about here and the places where you're applying uh, content moderation labels are not really simply objective questions. They're mostly subjective questions. Um, if, if we talked about Medicare for all being, you know, easily paid for inside a 10-year budget window uh, on assumptions X, Y, and Z that don't raise taxes, um, that's not true. There isn't any math by which Medicare for all pays for itself in some short-term window. But I don't think any of us really think you're going to slap a label on that saying this is disputed you know, accounting or math or policy projections. And so really what's happening is there's a prioritization grid that people are going through as they build even the algorithms, even those that aren't driven by humans. And they're driven by policy priorities of situated individuals. I may be wrong about this, but my suspicion is that your employee base is not actually 99% left of center. I bet it's less than that. Uh, and I would speculate that part of the reason uh, less than 1% of your employees give money to candidates on the right is because there's a social stigma attached to having conservative views inside your organization. And I would guess that those same sort of um, internal cultural biases inform the subjectivity of which issues end up labeled. So again, th this is sort of an odd place to be uh, in that I am skeptical that the content moderation policies are thought out well. They're not transparent enough for us to really know. Um, but I'm definitely skeptical that they're consistently applied. And yet, I'm not really on the side of thinking there's some easy governmental fix here. There's a lot about Section 230 that we could debate. I think some of the things Senator Durbin said about how uh, in the era of telephones, uh, nobody blamed the phone company uh, for other people having spread misinformation by the phone. Exactly. That's what would be the case if Section 230 were actually neutral. But you're applying content moderation policies and seemingly in a way that's not objective. So I know that I'm, I'm nearly at time, but I think it would be useful for us to hear from both of you to give a sort of three or five year window into the future if there isn't new legislation. What is changing, besides just saying we're moving from humans to more AI, what qualitatively is changing in the way content moderation happens inside your organizations short of a new regulatory scheme? Can you, can you tell us where you think you're actually improving and what problems you're trying to solve? Mr. Zuckerberg, you first, please. Senator, one of the areas that we're very focused on is transparency, um, both in the process and in the results. So we're already at the point where uh, every quarter we issue a community standards enforcement report that basically details um, the prevalence of, of each category of harmful content and uh, how effective we are at uh, addressing it before people have to even report it to us. Um, over time, we would like to fill that out and have more detail in that and make it more robust. We've already committed to um, an independent external audit of those metrics that people can trust them even more. Um, people have lots of different kinds of requests for where we might go with that in the future, uh, whether that's breaking down the, um, the stats by, by country or, or language or um, into more granular buckets, um, adding more data around precision. But I think that that would all be very helpful um, so that people can see and hold us accountable for how we're doing. And for what it's worth, I think that that would be a valuable part of a regulatory framework that uh, would not feel particularly overreaching to me um, is something that could be put in law um, that would create an apples to apples framework that all companies in this space would have to report on uh, the outcomes and effectiveness of their programs in that way. So at least we can see uh, how everyone is doing. Uh, that seems like a, a sensible step to me. Thank you, Mr. Dorsey. Senator Whitehouse. Oh, sorry, he, Mr. Dorsey is still answering the same question, and then I'll, I'll give it back to you in a hurry, Mr. So Lee. sorry, I missed that. It, it's a junior acting chairman. Mr. Dorsey. Um, thank you. Uh, well, I mean, if we're, if we're considering three to five years out, I, mean, I, I think the, 
realization that um, a centralized global um, content moderation system does not scale. And we need to rethink uh, how we um, how we operate these these services. And I would point to we certainly need transparency around any process that we have and uh, around the practice and the outcomes of those moderations. Um, but I think having uh, more control uh, so that uh, individuals can moderate themselves, uh, you know, pushing the power of moderation to the edges and to our customers and to the individuals using the Next. service Next. is something we'll see more of. And I also believe that having more choice around how algorithms are altering my experience and creating my experience is important. So being able to turn off ranking algorithms, being able to choose different ranking algorithms that are found um, written by third party developers and somewhat of an algorithmic uh, marketplace, I think uh, is important and um, uh, a future that would excite and, and energize us. Thank you, Evan. I've appreciated my interaction with both of your companies in the run up to this. And I think both of you said some meaty things there about ways we can move toward greater transparency. So I'll, I'll follow up again. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. 